All right, <laughs> now we are live. Thank you everyone for coming over to this new stream. For those of you that are new here, my name is Josh. Every single Monday through Friday, I make videos sharing tips, ideas, and stories, teaching you how to be your best self. Thank you guys for jumping on over to this one as well. Uh, there's a bit of technical difficulties there. I wasn't really sure what was going on. I was trying to use OBS for the first time and it just seemed like it was lagging really badly. So I gotta configure my settings a bit and see how I can make that work. Now, uh, thank you guys for jumping in. I know some of you are jumping in now. I do want to say hi to the people that headed on over here. Atlanta Boy, Jaden, Anthony, Ryan, Red Lightning, uh, Essel, S Echeles, Essel's Music, uh, Dominus, Gutter, Brongus, Ryan Goldstein, Lord of Luxury, uh, Benji, Leon, Ginger, Amazing Maniacs, Molly Ann. What is up, everyone? So in this live stream, I'm going to be sharing five texting rules and for dating and I want to debunk them. These are rules that people tend to follow when it comes to dating. Maybe they've heard it somewhere. Maybe um, you are someone that shares these rules with other people thinking, hey, this is what you have to do to, um, this is what you have to do to kind of get someone to like you or this, this is how you don't seem needy or this is how you kind of actually build attraction. I want to kind of go over those five rules, debunk them, and I want to share some of the rules and things that you guys have heard when it comes to texting. I want to kind of dive into those as well. Um, so it's pronounced Eccles, Eccles, okay, Eccles, I think I said that right. So um, first I want to jump in, I want to ask you guys here, um, are there any specific things that you've heard about texting someone that you think you have to follow? Um, this could be anything like how often you should text them, when you should text them, um, should you not text them at all, wait for them to text you? What are different things that you guys have heard? I'm going to jump in the chat and see what some of you guys have to say. Um, Kaiser Franz says, Josh, are double messages that bad? When my date sends me them and asks several times if I'm still there, I think it's cute. So yeah, I mean, in, in that specific scenario, it sounds like, um, you know, them asking for there is cute and you guys have a thing going on there. Generally though, when a person's sending multiple messages like, hey, hey, where are you? Hey, hey, uh, it can feel a bit overwhelming. It can feel like they're not really uh, giving you your space or giving you time to respond when you feel comfortable. So it can be uh, a burden. It can be overwhelming sometimes. So I'd be careful with it. I wouldn't do as much. I wouldn't do it as often. But if you guys find it cute and it's something fun that you do, then hey, do it. You know, like there's, there's no point in, in saying something is bad or saying something is wrong if, you know, the two of you are the ones who are doing it. So, uh, and you guys are enjoying it. So I do want to jump into some more questions here, guys. Uh, hip hop gamer said, hip hop gamer, hip hop house says, Hey Josh, can I watch right now? I'm writing down the verse, my verses. Do it, man. Get at it. Um, uh, Jaden says you should wait for a good while till you text back. So that's something a lot of people hear as well. You know, you don't you don't want to text too soon because you come off looking needy. Uh, so when should you text? Should you wait a while? Should you do it immediately? I'm going to tackle one of those as one of the rules here. I, d I definitely want to go through them. I'm going to give it a few minutes for people to kind of jump in here. Uh, is that all right? I got to make my own con content. Dude, do your thing, man. Hip hop house. Can't blame you for hustling, man. Okay. Uh, echo echoes is how it's pronounced. I'm very bad at explaining. That's fine. I, I'm very bad at pronouncing it. <laughs> uh, Killjoy says, how much time do I need to wait? That's a good question too. Like, so I think that's going to be a big question that a lot of you guys are going to have. When should you start texting them? When should you start the conversation? I'm going to jump into that rule as well. Uh, if you haven't already hit the thumbs up button as I gear up here and tell you guys what the rules are, and I'm going to debunk each and every single one of them for you. Uh, JC Vicker says, Josh, my friend told my crush that I like her and now it's really awkward. Some people say she likes me back, but others say she doesn't like me. What do I do? Okay. So your crush knows that you like them, right? Your friend told your crush, things are awkward now. You don't know what to do. Well, I think if it's a matter of, you know, your crush is going to be waiting to see what you do. Are you going to keep talking to them? Are you going to avoid them? Your crush is going to want to know where you stand. So if people are saying that she likes you back, I think the best thing for you to do is to pursue her, to keep talking to her, to get to know her better. Yes, your friend kind of spilled the beans and put it out there, but that doesn't mean it's the end of the road for you. You could still move forward. You could still talk to her and you could still ask her out. Uh, RB, there won't be an Instagram after party this time. Um, there's a bunch of things I have to take care of later today, so I won't be doing an Instagram after party. I apologize. Um, Devil C. Wesker says, how to text like a potential partner, not a friend? That's a very good question, uh, Devil. So if if you want to 
get on a different level of texting where you don't seem so friendly and you seem more like someone they may want to date. Um, I've done a few videos on how to kind of flirt through texts. Just a few quick things I would recommend doing is if you want to start flirting more through text, you can always do things like be a little cocky in how you speak to them. You can always make jokes and say like, oh yeah, you know, you're just saying that because you know I'm better than you. Little things like that that are so over the top that they're funny and that they're silly. Not like you're actually being a jerk and saying things like that, but uh, teasing them about something that you guys have an inside joke about. Um, maybe they like a certain movie that you think is like the worst movie in the world. You might want to tease them about that. Uh, some some funny story that they told you might want to give them a nickname and have fun with that. I think moving into the position where you're a potential partner versus just a friend is all about establishing that you're not just doing things to play it safe. You're having fun and you're enjoying your interactions with them. And there's a, a, a bit of tension and playfulness that comes along with it. So I want to jump into the first rule here because I think it's important to um, cover something that I think a lot of you guys are touching on here. And that is... Uh, the first rule that you always hear, and this is a rule I definitely want to debunk, is you should never text them first, right? You should never be the first one to send a text message. Um, you don't want to come off looking needy, or you know, you should um, you you should wait until they respond to you or they interact with you because if you're the first one that's starting a conversation, you're the first one that's approaching them. Well, then yeah, then you're gonna look like a loser, right? That's kind of the rule that we always hear. You know, you want to play it cool and 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 wait for them to come to you. But here's here's my uh, idea on that. I don't think you should wait around for anything. I think if you like someone, if you want to talk to them and you want to get to know them better, you should always be making the effort. It doesn't matter if you're a guy. It doesn't matter if you're a girl. Because I've encountered situations where, um, for some of the girls here on the stream too, that you like a guy and you just kind of are waiting for him to talk to you or waiting for him to ask you out. I think if you're the one that likes someone, it's always on you to take that first initial step. So I don't think you should uh, wait around for someone to respond to you, you should always be making that initiative. So, you know, that whole rule, that idea of um, never sending the first text, never reaching out first, waiting for them to come to you, I think all you're really doing is creating time and space for them to forget about you and for them to move on to other things. You always want to be fresh in your crush's mind. You always want them to be thinking about you. You always want to kind of uh, be in that headspace where they're they're thinking, wow, you know, like, uh, what's going on with them? Uh, I remember that story they told me, um, you know, they're fun to talk about. I can't wait to see them tomorrow at school. You always want to kind of be in the back of their mind and and, and always be a positive association that, that you have with them. And the only way you're going to build that is by you taking the initiative. Now, where can this go a little too far? Well, it can go a little too far if you are super pushy with it. So if you are constantly messaging them saying, well, if I don't keep talking to them, they're, then they're going to ignore me. They're going to forget about me. Then you can always shift the balance over to the other side where they do get annoyed. They do feel like it's overwhelming. So if you're holding yourself back, and I'm speaking directly to you guys right now, if you're holding yourself back from sending a crush of yours, your crush, a DM, if you're holding yourself back from talking to them or texting them or just interacting with them in any way because you don't know the right thing to say, you don't know when is the right time to do it, you don't know how to keep a conversation going, all you're doing is creating time for them to kind of forget about you. That's all you're doing right now. And what you need to be doing is taking that first initial step. And that's what I want each and every single one of you guys to do. After this live stream, when this live stream ends, I want you, if you haven't already, to send a message to your crush. We're going to go through the rest of the rules on uh, that, that I want to debunk here, but I want you guys to get in the back of your minds. And I want to see here in the chat, post a thumbs up right now if you're going to do this. You're going to take this challenge, guys. If you're going to send your crush a message. I know you're scared. I know you're worried. I know you're nervous, but I want you to do it. What that message will be, we'll get into a little bit later, but I want you guys to do it. So let me get thumbs ups if you feel like you're up for this challenge. If you're not for this challenge, put a thumbs down. Let's see. Let's see who's who's ready to shoot their crush a message, to make something happen, um, to, to not sit and wait for the right opportunity, but to take the opportunity to create it. So that whole rule of never sending the first message, never initiating conversation with your crush because you don't want to look like a loser or weird, we're putting that rule aside, we're forgetting about it, we're debunking it, and we're saying, no, if you want something to happen, you have to make it happen. I want to jump back here in the chat and see what you guys have to say. I see a few thumbs up, Atlanta boys in there, uh, Brongus got a thumbs up there, uh, YR301176, thumbs up. Lord of Luxury says, can't send my crush a message if I don't have her number. Lord of Luxury, I hear what you're saying. Is there any other way you can reach out to her? Maybe you have her email. Maybe you are friends with her on Facebook. Maybe you um, can message her online some other way, right? I know that you can access Instagram through a web browser now too. They have a whole DM thing that you can uh, message them. Um, so there's a lot of different, a lot of different opportunities and ways 
Uh, Austin, Austin Butler says, but don't got the number. So guys, if you don't have your crush's number, there are still other ways to message them, right? You can shoot them a message on Snapchat. You can DM them on Instagram. You can message them on Facebook. The whole purpose of this is to break out of your comfort shell and to take that initial step. The thing that's holding you back is the fear that if you come on too strong, you're going to look needy, but you have to set something in motion if you want something to happen. So, um, Tipix asks a very straightforward, what if I don't have my crush's number? You know, if you don't have any way of contacting your crush, then okay. Those are specific situations. And what I want you to do instead, if you can't message your crush right after this live stream, I want you to talk to them tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday. All right. I know some of you guys, you're already outside of school. Some of you in the UK and, and Europe and stuff, but tomorrow we can all do this tomorrow, Friday, ask your crush for their number, ask your crush for their Instagram, ask your crush for their Snapchat, make it happen. Stop holding yourself back. Stop giving yourself reasons to not text them. And when I say text, I mean message. I mean, communicate in some way online. Um, let's see what else you guys are saying here. Cheyenne Hall says, Hey, so I have been, uh, ha so I've been, uh, ah, I'm reading this wrong. Hey, so I've been loving having my boyfriend that has autism, but something happened that I never thought would. My best friend told him I wanted to do something sexual with him. And I never said that. Ooh, that's not cool. That's pretty, pretty uncool that your friend did that. I think, um, if that's the case, if your friend is kind of saying all these things, maybe they're doing it to try to be funny. Um, but that's not fair to you. You know, that's, they're your friend. They should respect your boundaries and respect your decisions to decide whatever you want. I think the best thing for you to do is to talk to your friend, let your friend know where you stand, let them know what you're okay with and what you're not okay with. And then also to talk to your boyfriend, let them know what happened. Um, hopefully your friend can clarify it for your boy boyfriend as well. Once you talk to them, uh, they can say, Hey, look, I was just joking around. I didn't mean that. I don't want to interfere in your relationship, but you need to kind of sit them aside and talk to them and not yell at them and fight with them and get angry with them, but to express to them, why um, it's not cool that they did that and how you want to make any decision as to what you want to do for yourself whenever you want to, not by someone else's accord or by anyone else's pressure. Thomas Turner says, I have her number, but it would be weird to, for a... Uh, It'd be weird for me to message her out of the blue. Thomas Turner, I hear you on that. I think it is weird, right? It's weird to just say, let me just shoot a message to my crush. So what we're going to do is later on in the stream here, we're going to craft uh, a message, something you could send along to them. So I got I, let me get on to the second point here, guys. Um, I know some of you guys have questions. If I don't get to answer your questions, you can always choose, hit the little super chat button down below. That'll pop up the question right in front of me. I answer every single super chat. I go way in depth on the answers there. So if you have a question that's burning and you need to ask me, super chat function is the best way to do that. So the second uh, texting myth that I think a lot of people, second texting rule uh, that I consider a myth that a lot of people tend to follow is, sorry, <clears throat> to wait three days to respond, right? So let's say you ask someone for their number, right? We were just talking about this. Let's say you ask someone for their phone number, ask someone for their Instagram, and you you don't want to come off too strong. So you tell yourself, I'm going to wait a few days because, you know, there's a magic number of how long you're supposed to wait before you actually talk to them, right? I think that's baloney. I think that's a, a myth. I think it's a rule that we should not follow. Don't ever uh, put a time limit in between you interacting with your crush. So here's an example, right? Let's say you talk to your crush at school um, or you hang out with your crush and you tell yourself, you tell yourself that, you tell yourself that, um, Hey, you know, I want to talk to them, but like I said, I don't, I don't want to come off needy. So I'm going to wait a few days to, to respond to them. So I don't come off looking needy. I don't agree with that at all. I think the best thing for you to do is if you like someone, you want to continuously build something with them. You want to show them that you are interested, that you're not going to hang out with them and then forget about them for a few days, right? A lot of people think that it builds um, it builds a sense of character, like, oh, you know, like, oh, he's not constantly thinking about you. Hey, why'd you guys ban Dario? Don't ban Dario. Dario's cool, guys. Don't ban Dario. Uh, mute him. I have to go in and unban him. Arby, you're going to lose moderator status for now. For, for now. Um, but basically, like I said, don't wait any certain amount of days to message them. It's like if you hang out with someone and you talk to someone, then I think the best thing for you to do is to follow up with them the very next day, to talk to them, to say, hey, listen, you know, um, 
I really enjoyed hanging out with you last night. I thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, I, I hope that we can hang out again. I think you're really cool. Saying that to your crush and letting them know that, letting them know that you want to see them and you want to continue to talk to them and you're not going to kind of come up with, uh, you know, like other things to kind of block you or bother you from talking to them. Then I think it's definitely going to help you see that it's definitely going to help you see that, you know, Hey, look, I'm building something with my crush. Uh, I'm not kind of just waiting for the right moment. You're not focusing on the worry. You're focusing on what you want to accomplish with them. You're focusing on what you want to build. So I'm just, I'm, I'm getting caught up in the chat here. So basically Dario got banned accidentally. I have to go in and un unmute him or unban him, uh, whatever happened. Guys, like I said, with the mute function and with all those things, that's not there for the purpose of just blocking someone to block someone or to mute someone to mute someone. The purpose there is that if someone's saying something that is harmful to others in the chat, uh, yes, you guys will tease each other, see that happening, but if someone's saying something harmful, that's the only reason why you'd mute them or block them. Not just because you don't like what they say or you think that they're being a troll or something like that. You know, we have to kind of use these powers with caution. Um, and I know I, there's a bunch, Atlanta boy, Thomas Turner, uh, Anthony, uh, Arby was in here too, but you know, as the mods, but like I said, guys, the muting thing is not supposed to just be whenever you willy nilly or don't like what someone's saying. So that'll be that moving forward. So like I said, don't wait three days. It's a bad rule. It's a bad thing to follow. You want to follow up as soon as you can. You want to let them know that you're thinking about them, that you're interested in them. Because if you are constantly uh, letting time gaps happen between talking to them, then you're only creating opportunities where they're going to kind of move on or focus on other people or think you're not actually into them, which is not what you want. MDH game says uh, it was a mistake. They accidentally, accidentally clicked banned. I've done it a few times as a mod on another channel. Yeah, but that's what I mean. So. Um, that's what I mean. So it's like to click on mute or to click on ban when he, I, I just looked at his message. He didn't really even say anything that was worthy of muting. So that's my fear. It's that people will just think, oh, I'm going to mute, I'm going to mute, I'm going to mute. But then accidents like this happen. So you have to use these powers with caution. Um, so Anthony's saying all these texting myths are crap. I agree. There are things that people kind of implant in their own minds and tell themselves that, oh, I can't do it because of this reason, or I shouldn't do this, or I shouldn't do that. They're limiting factors and you want to knock out those limiting factors guys okay so on to the next texting rule that i totally want to debunk i think is a huge myth you shouldn't shouldn't follow up you shouldn't do this don't ask them to hang out too soon right a lot of times you hear oh no you know you don't want to ask them to hang out too soon because you're going to come off looking like uh you're a creep or you're a weirdo or you're you're being pushy right so let's say you're talking to your crush and you get their number. Let's say after this live stream, you guys DM your crush, you start talking to them. You guys have a good conversation. You might think to yourself, well, I can't ask them to hang out because if I ask them to hang out, it's going to look too needy. I'm going to look like I'm pushing it too quickly, right? So you tell yourself, well, I'm just going to keep talking to them. I'm not going to ask them to hang out. I'm going to you know, wait a while before actually asking them. And that's what a lot of people do, right? Now, there's a benefit to waiting, right? The benefit to waiting is that you're investing more time through text and getting to know them better and talking. But by not leading it to asking them to hang out, you really kind of, I wish I could draw a diagram for you here, but like there's a certain point where texting becomes too much and they start to, you know, in the beginning when you guys are texting each other, you know, there's interest, it's building up. But then at some point, the curve comes back, back around the other side and they start to say to themselves, well, we talk all the time through text, but they're not asking me to hang out. We're not building anything together. Um, you know, we're not, we're not growing in any sense that we can take it to the next stage. He just wants to text me. And this is a mistake a lot of people make. A lot of people get stuck in the texting zone and they never take it to the next stage. You always want to be changing things up when you're talking to someone. If you're constantly sending back and forth text messages, maybe you want to switch up the conversation by throwing in pictures or recording little videos or doing live, live chats with them or FaceTimes. You want to kind of always change up how you're communicating with them because it keeps things fresh and interesting, right? You're not always going to find a million conversations to talk about. I know I've put together my 20 icebreaker conversation starters. And in that I kind of focus on different things you can start the conversation with. But if you're just going through each of those in a texting conversation, you're eventually going to run out and the conversation is eventually going to fall flat. So the only way to prevent the conversation from falling flat 
is to ask them to hang out. You want to always take it to the next stage. If you're holding yourself back from doing that, if you feel like, well, no, I need, I need to talk to them for a little bit longer before I ask them to hang out. If you're kind of coming up with these excuses and playing mental gymnastics around it, I think it's time to put that to rest. It's time to ask them to hang out, especially if you're talking to them regularly. And when I say regularly, I mean, you're texting them every so often. You're texting them every few days. You guys interact in class. You guys have a bunch of, um, touch points where you guys are communicating. So asking them to hang out actually works hand in hand. Uh, it works hand in hand with uh, texting and hanging out work hand in hand there. Uh, <laughs> I, got, I got distracted there. I'm, I'm gonna jump in the chat here and see what some of you guys have to say. Um, I'm curious to know guys, what do you guys think that, um, are you holding yourself back from asking your crush to hang out? Is it something that you find is your sticking point that, yeah, it's easier to text them and it's easier to uh, it's easier to kind of just focus on conversation online, but the moment it gets to in person, I get nervous, I get worried, I get scared. If you're someone that's afraid to hang out with your crush or even ask them to hang out, I want you guys to post a thumbs up right now so that I can know who who's at that sticking point, who's at that point where they're not sure where to go or what to do and how to kind of take it to the next step. So Sick Drummer asks, how do we get the 20 conversation starters book thing? So yeah, basically, Sick Drummer, just search on YouTube, the Josh Speaks Icebreakers. It's my Icebreakers Conversation Starters. It's 20 uh, icebreakers that I've put together in a guide. I've broken down in that guide different things to say, uh, diff different things to follow up with. Basically, they're just conversation starters. If you fall like you're running on a blank and you don't know what to say, that guide is going to help you out. Just search it up, the video on YouTube. <clears throat> It'll pop up and you'll be able to download it from there. Uh, Lord of Luxury asks, Josh, were you cool in high school? I don't think I was cool at all. I was a pretty average guy. I, you know, was kind of nerdy. I had my own group of like nerdy friends and, um, you know, I wasn't part of the cool kids at all. I knew some of them, you know, cause like you always know some of them, like they're in your class and you had to work on a project with them. Like I was somewhat friends with a few of them, but overall I was a pretty nerdy guy. Dario. Arby had accidentally banned you. I'm happy that you're back though. Now that you're back, I'll remod Arby. Um, but I wanted to make sure you're back before that. All right, Lewis Gordon gave a thumbs up. Killjoy thumbs up. Sick drummer. Shane, hey, what's up, Shane? Zachary, Oyo TV. Oh, jumped. Hok Hokage, uh, Kerblon, Anthony, Thomas Turner. Oh, Thomas Turner did thumbs up. Those are all the thumbs up. So it seems like a bunch of you guys are in that sticking point where it's like, ah, asking them to hang out is a difficult thing because you don't know what they're gonna say. Are they gonna say yes? Are they gonna say no? You're kind of caught in the middle where it's like, I'm just gonna keep texting them. I'm just gonna keep conversation going. I'm just gonna keep saying, hey, what's up? And having these small conversations with them. But I think sometimes you do need to try to take that leap. I know you'd be asking yourself like, but I haven't built up enough, enough, um, you know, like of a relationship with them before I'm asking them to hang out. And I think that the, the way to build up that relationship with them is by learning a little bit about them, sharing more about yourself, right? Sharing things about yourself, and then trying to see how you can take the things that you guys connect over and turn it into something in real life. And here's a good way to maybe do that. I, I like using the movies as an example because I feel like movies are simple things, but let's say you guys are both really into um, the Marvel movies, right? Both really like Marvel, both like Iron Man, Captain America, everything, the Avengers movies. Uh, you guys find out, you find out about your crush. Oh wow, they really like the Marvel movies. Well, you know, what's the next Marvel movie coming out? Adve Avengers Endgame, right? Or is there something else before it? I don't know if the Spider-Man movies come out before it. Whatever the next movie is, you might want to talk to them about, oh, wow, you know, like I saw the trailer for the Spider-Man movie, you know, what'd you think about it? And you guys have a conversation about that. Then you might want to say, hey, look, I want to get a bunch of people together to go watch it. Why don't you come with us? And boom, now you've made plans to hang out with your crush based on something that the two of you guys were texting back and forth. And it doesn't have to be movies. It could be anything. It could be sports. It could be video games. It could be music. It could be anything that you share in common with them or, or something that you like that they're interested in learning more about or something they like that you're more interested in learning about. Corey Mangan says, I don't know how to carry on a combo with anyone. So Corey, that can be tricky sometimes. It could be incredibly difficult to figure out how to carry a conversation. Um, I think the best thing to do in that situation is definitely to um, check out my icebreaker conversation starters guide because that gives you things to talk about. But I think the best way, the best way to kind of really figure out how to uh, carry a conversation and keep it going. Let me just make sure my mic is connected correctly. Yes, the Eddie mic. 
Uh, someone said I sound differently, so I wasn't sure if it was the mic. Um, the best way to kind of carry a conversation or just to kind of create more interesting conversations is to go deeper into the questions that you ask. So you might want to ask a question like, um, a good question might be something like, hey, you know, um, what's your favorite, who's your favorite music artist? Who do you like to listen to? And they may say something like Drake or Ariana Grande or whatever, right? And then from there, you can say, oh, cool. How long have you been listening to Drake? You know, did you listen to his early stuff or, oh, cool. You like Ariana Grande. Did you used to watch her when she was on uh, Nickelodeon? I forgot what the show was. Victorious? She was on Victorious? I think she was on Victorious. You might want to ask about that or say, oh, you like Ariana Grande. Do you like any other artists similar to her? You know, I look at it kind of like how when you're shopping on Amazon or shopping online or, or you're browsing on Netflix and, it, and you know, you watch something or you look at something and then it says, hey, you may also like this. And what the algorithm there, Netflix and Amazon are doing is they're figuring out, hey, you may also be interested in these things too. And conversations kind of work the same way. If you're talking to them about something here, you might want to say, hey, do you also like this thing? And find other things that they like as well to carry the conversation forward to have it go deeper. So Arby, please stop spamming. All right, so Jaden says, Josh, so the reason why people are scared to ask out or just talk to their crush since they are scared of the uncertainty of their crush's reaction to them. Yep, Jaden, I totally agree with you on there. There's always a fear of, um, you know, not knowing how a person's going to react. Are they going to like you? Are they going to dislike you? Are you guys going to run into an awkward moment together? There's always that uncertainty and you never quite know how someone else is going to react. But you can never know how someone else is gonna react. That's never something that you can control. So you run into a point where you tell yourself, well, I only have the power to control the things that I can control, right? And what you do have control over is the things that you say and the things that you do. And that's where your focus should be. It should really be focused on you trying to build something with them, have them feel comfortable around you, have them open up to you. That's what you have control over, what you can present, and then hopefully what they can buy into and they can connect with you over. I know there's a fear that they may not like you. I know there's a fear um, that there's a fear that, you know, Hey, maybe things will go sour, or maybe they'll be disgusted, or maybe they'll say something rude. Maybe any of those things will happen. But I think the best way to overcome that fear really is to dive deeper into asking about them, learning about their hobbies and interests, and also sharing more about yourself. All right, I'm going to jump into the next one here, but I want to answer a few more questions here. Uh, Matthew Chaplin says, hey, Josh, I have this fr uh, these friends that are mostly really nice, but can sometimes be really toxic. It's not often, but should I stop being their friend? So Matthew, I, I made a video a while back called How to Get Rid of Negative People in Your Life. Uh, I was with my friend Amanda Wan here. She's another YouTuber. And we talk about cutting people out of your life that aren't bringing you up. And this could be people that are just doing bad things, have bad habits. Maybe they're smoking and drinking or cutting class or, you know, something that's considered bad that you don't want to get mixed up in, or maybe they're just negative. Maybe they're constantly criticizing other people or they're bullying other people, or they're just making you feel down and like crap. If you, if the, those are the people in your life, those aren't people that are lifting you up. They aren't people that are helping you succeed or encouraging you. And you want to surround yourself with people that are going to encourage you, not people that are going to bring you down. So check out that video, how to get rid of negative people from your life. I think it's going to be helpful. Um, so to jump into the next one here, by the way, guys, um, there is not going to be an Instagram after party today. I have things I got to do after the live stream, but, um, so Jordo, yeah, yeah. I think the reason why there's less people is because I did my first stream and then the second one popped up and I don't even think it notified, uh, people. So I think people are only discovering it through, uh, people are probably only seeing it through, through the, um, the browse notifications. So I think I, I messed it up there, but. Um, because it probably notified everyone for the first one I did. And then I had to close the first one and start a second one. It was a, it was a doozy trying to use OBS for the first time. Got to practice and test it out on a practice stream before I do anything. But yeah, Kaiser says there might not be many viewers, uh, because I never got a notification for the second stream. Yeah. I think that's what it does. What it was. It notified people the first one. I don't know if it notified for a second. I don't know what it is. Clearly, it didn't go out to everyone. <laughs> so, either way, though, I'm here. I'm happy. I'm talking to you guys. I'm happy we can uh, get through these five things. 
Uh, next stream will be better. Next stream, I'll, I'll fix it up. So the fourth thing I want to talk about here is um, the idea, and this also ties into the other one here. This also ties into the other texting role that the longer you talk to them, the better, right? We constantly tell ourselves that you need to keep talking to your crush through text. You need to keep conversation going. You need to keep diving deeper into talking to them um, because that's the only way you're going to build anything with them, right? So I said in the other rule, which is that you want to kind of ask them to hang out. You don't want to put that off. And in this one, the, the the question ends up being how much talking is too much talking, right? So like I said, there's a wave that happens where um, if you're talking to them too much uh, and you're not asking them to hang out, you're not taking it to the next step, then they, eventually they're going to kind of get bored. They're going to move on. They're not going to really care or not going to really uh, pay attention to you, right? And that's the challenge that you may run into. It's the fact that, it's the fact that um, you know, I got distracted there again. <laughs> I keep getting distracted by the chat. Keep jumping in. Um, if 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 they're if they get bored of the conversation and you guys are no longer talking and you guys are um and all, all you're doing is talking, all you're doing is kind of texting each other back and forth, but there isn't any kind of lead up point, right? If there isn't, if it isn't leading to anything, then eventually they're going to give up. So I think it's so so important to invest time in talking to your crush. I'm not trying to say texting your crush is bad or wrong. You need to text your crush. You need to get to know them. You need to talk to them more because if you don't do that, if you don't put the effort in to get to know them better, well, then they're just going to get bored. They're going to give up on you. They're going to stop paying attention to you. And that's not the best thing that you want. That's not the best thing to happen here. Uh, what you really want to focus on doing is having your crush feel like you're taking your interaction somewhere. And that somewhere may be hanging out in person. That somewhere may be um, meeting up and hanging out during school. It may be FaceTiming with each other. It's leading to something positive. That's the direction you want to go. Uh, Mr. Hobby says, how, how do you show a girl you're interested in person? So Mr. Hobbies, I think the best way to show a girl that you're interested in person is you definitely want to get her. You definitely want to have uh, that girl see that you are interested in learning about her. You're interested in talking to her. You're not afraid to talk to her. A lot of times people want their crush to take notice of them, but they're not showing their crush that they like them. They're not showing their crush that they want to talk to them or get to know them better. So maybe they're kind of staying in the background or they're having their friends talk to their crush for them. Are they doing anything where they're not taking front step? Fr they're not taking the front and center step here. Um, Backpack says, "Hey, give me a convo starter, quick texting." So, backpack a good conversation starter might be something like, um, "Let's see." Actually, you guys jump in. What are some conversation starters you guys would recommend? I want to hear what you guys have to say. Um, Corey Mangan says, my crush doesn't use Snapchat anymore, and that's the only way I could, could text her. I hear you, Corey. You might have to res uh, you know, might have to turn to talking to her uh, online, not online, in person if you can. That might be the next best option. So Sonic Mania 4 says, hey, man, good to see you again. Uh, I remember when I used to text my previous crush. Hey, Romina, thank you so much for the super chat. Really do appreciate it. Thank you for jumping on here. It means a lot to me. Uh, <laughs> thank you again. Um, Killjoy says, so what have you been up to today? That's a good one. That's a good one. I think that if you're going to ask them what they've been up to today, you might want to start. Here's something I would recommend guys that if you're going to ask someone, Hey, what's up? Hey, how you doing? How's it going? You might want to start with uh, a lead in as to what you did or what your day was like. So you might want to say, man, today was a crazy day for me. I had to do X, Y, Z. How is your day going? Did you do anything fun today? So you're still asking them what's up, but you're leading in with something that might intrigue them, something where they may say something like, um, oh, wow, what happened? If you had a crazy day, how did it go? Um, so that's something you might want to jump in and try out. Um, that would be a good conversation starter. Otherwise, like I said, check out my 20 icebreaker conversation starters. There's 20 of them in there, things you could say through texting. Show what you're reading, eating, or watching. That's a good question. That's a good one, Alex. I think that by showing someone a piece of your life, what you're doing in that moment, hey, look, I'm eating a meal. Take a picture of the meal. Uh, you know, send them a quick video of you wherever you are. Or, you know, make it very personalized when you send these things to them too. Because a lot of times what people tend to do is they'll record something and they'll just mass spam it out to a bunch of people. And it's like, okay, 
when you receive a mass spammed video that you know went to a bunch of other people, it doesn't feel special. But if you say something like, hey, what's up, blah, 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 I just wanted to let you show you what's going on. Say their name, show them what's going on, and they're gonna feel like that message is super, super personalized for them. And I can almost guarantee that they're gonna respond. They're gonna say something. If you're sending them a personalized video of what you're doing and what's going on, it's gonna seem way more authentic and way more real uh, for them to experience that. Devil, Devil C. Wesker says, here's a myth uh, that I heard you should only text. Here's a myth that I heard you should only text her about asking them out and nothing else while getting to know them. Yep, that's something I'm definitely going to make a video on. Uh, a lot of people have talked about this, that it's like, oh, you should only text someone when you're making plans with them, which I don't think is a good idea. I think that you should be texting them uh, daily or every other day. What you really want to do is establish a connection with them. You want to show them that you're interested in talking to them, that you want to learn more about them. And if you don't have the option to always do that in, per in person, maybe you guys aren't in class together, maybe you only see them once every day or something like that, texting texting is the next best thing. It's a great way to communicate. Um, and a lot of times people overlook it because they feel like, oh, it's weird to it's weird to, to text my crush or it's weird to talk to them. I don't think it's weird at all. I think it's what you should be doing. Um, so don't hold yourself back. Don't don't buy into the myth of, um, oh, you should only text them when you want to ask them to hang out. Ask them to hang out is an important piece, but you need to build up the first steps there. And the first steps are to talk to them, to learn about their hobbies, learn about their interests, and to share more about yourself. Like I said, you don't want to stay in that limbo for too long, so you will have to ask them to hang out. But that is all part of the bigger process, which is getting to know them better. All right, guys, I want to share the fifth uh, texting myth here uh, and a rule that a lot of people seem to fall into and, and, and buy into, which I think is a bad one. You don't want to take this path because the moment you start taking this path, it's going to just make things so much harder for you. And this is that you should let your friends do the talking for you. And what I mean by that is giving your phone to your friends and saying, hey, can you text my crush? Can you talk to my crush for me? This is a bad, bad strategy. And the reason why it's such a bad strategy is because what you're doing is you, you're not, um, first, you're not taking the initiative to build a connection with your crush yourself. You might be telling yourself, well, I don't know what to say. My friends are better texters than me. Let them text. Um, so it's not something I would recommend doing at all. I think that you want to always be in control of the conversation between you and your crush. The moment you pass it off to your friends, your friends may say something weird or silly or stupid. And that's the worst. It's the worst if your friends do something and then you have to jump in and, and fix their mistake or you have to correct what they said or they say something embarrassing and you have to deal with it. That is the uh, uh, like the totally, totally the worst thing that can happen. Um, but what I think instead you should really focus on is, um, like I said, talking to your crush directly, not passing that off to anyone because as you talk to them more, you start to learn how they communicate, how they talk back to you. And they learn more about how you talk back to them. You guys learn how you text and how you type and what you say and how you speak to each other. Um, yeah, so Fortnite, it's interesting. It says three people, but there's a lot of people in the chat here. So I have no clue if the number is even accurately pulling. I don't even think it's accurately pulling the amount of people. Who knows? Um, but that's the big mistake that a lot of people make. Uh, yeah, Fortnite, I'll take a look at your thing here. You said, so my friend and his girlfriend, quote unquote, hooked up at a Super Bowl party and we were in the seventh grade. How do you feel about this? Also, how do you deal with jealousy with things like this because I'm not dating him? Fortnite, I get where you're coming from on that. Um, if your friend hooked up, if your friend hooked up with them, then they hooked up with them. It's like, um, it's not something that you can change. It's like if your friend and his girlfriend hooked up, I, I know that there's always this kind of jealousy that happens where you feel like, oh, you know, why them and not me? How come they have a girlfriend and I don't have a girlfriend? You might beat yourself up over it, but don't do that, man. It's like everyone everyone will get into a relationship at their own time whenever they're capable and they're ready for it, right? It's not fair to compare yourself to others because everyone is on a different path. So if you find yourself getting jealous or getting upset or getting annoyed, um, if you find yourself in that type of situation where just it's bothering you, I think the best thing for you to do is to try to focus on other people. Use that as motivation to go talk to other girls or talk to other people that you want to get to know better. Don't let other people's successes hold you back from creating your own because you are different people. You have different experiences. Yeah, Anthony, I know it's confusing. I don't know why it says one person. I definitely broke YouTube somehow by doing this second stream while the first one was going. I definitely did something wrong, but 
I appreciate each and every single one of you guys in here. If you are someone that's watching, just so I can get a real sense of who's on here, let's do a quick roll call. Everyone say hi right now in the chat. Let's see how many people are actually in here. We're going to show you Susan Wojowski, you know, who's, who's, uh, oh, is it Wojciski? I forgot how to pronounce her name. Reese, man, good to see you. He says, that texting rule is crap. In the beginning, you shouldn't text all the time, but I feel when you're in a relationship, you can text more often. I agree. You don't want to text so much that it becomes, uh, you don't look so needy, but a lot of times people create these weird arbitrary rules of like, let me wait, let me hold on, let me do this. Hi right now in the chat. That's, that's funny, XG Gamer. So we got a lot of hi. Let's just do a quick shout out. Walter, Jaden, Anthony, Oyo, Emmanuel, Zachary, Atlanta Boy, Devil, Jordo. Uh, Doctor, Lord of Luxury, Killjoy, Tony, Alex, Marcio, uh, Kajana, and X Design, Mr. Nostalgia, D Demir, Atlanta Boy, Cheyenne, Matthew, Jordo, Ho ha 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 Hokage, Ali, uh, Marco, Walter, Kaiser, Walter, Tony, Corey, Walter, Jordo. Okay, JP, Lone Wolf, Emmanuel, uh, Austin, Ali, Alex, JP Whaley says hi, hi, hi. Yeah, there's like more than 30. Clearly, YouTube is broken here. So thank you guys for being on it. Um, I did hear Dean is leaving WWE. We'll talk WWE on uh, DM. But yeah, so like I said, don't have your friends do the talking for you. It kind of it ruins the vibe that you have going, guys. I do want to quickly uh, say that if you aren't following me over on Instagram, I'm not doing an Instagram live stream tonight because I am busy. But after my YouTube videos, I generally always go live on Instagram. So if you want to follow me over there and not miss out, you can definitely go follow me over on Instagram at the Josh Speaks, um, and you can join my Instagram live stream. I'll probably go live this weekend, so that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, Red Lightning, did I say your name? I'm pretty sure I said your name too. Um, so I'll definitely be on there, be live over there on Instagram. So next sometime this weekend, so go follow me over there. Um, but I do want to quickly just run through these rules again because there are things that i think you guys should know and i if you are late to the stream or you jumped midway you might have missed a few of them rule number one that you should, totally shouldn't follow never text them first this idea of not texting your crush first because you don't want to look too needy put it aside if you like someone go for it don't hold yourself back if you want to build a relationship with them you need to take that initiative rule number two Wait three days to respond? Uh-uh, not in my book. If you like someone, if you hang out with them, if you talk to them, I would say respond to them the next day. There's no greater feeling than knowing that someone really enjoyed your company. Someone enjoyed talking to you. Someone enjoyed hanging out with you. So you lose nothing from letting that person know that you want to talk to them more. Rule number three, don't ask to hang out too soon. Oh, hold on. This idea of like, no, you have to wait. If you ask to hang out too soon, you're going to ruin it. I don't buy it. I think that if you are connecting with someone and you guys are vibing and you're getting along really well, there's nothing wrong with asking to hang out the next day or a week from now or a month from now. A good simple way to ask them to hang out is to do it in a group group hangout. Ask your friends and their friends to all get together and go out. That way you could spend time with them and at some point you could peel off one-on-one -on -one and you guys can talk. But don't be afraid to ask them to hang out. There's no limitation as to when you should go do it. It might happen the next day, it might happen a week or wherever. Rule number four, that's three. Rule number four that I don't think you should follow is the longer you talk, the better. This is the opposite. This is telling yourself, well, you know what? Um, I'm not going to ask them to hang out. I'm just going to keep talking to them because I, I don't, I'm not close enough with them. I'm not close enough with them. I can't ask them to hang out yet. You keep telling yourself you're not close enough yet, to, so you're just going to keep texting. But there's a curve with that. And it's like if you continue continuously text them too much, eventually they're going to get bored because you're not progressing. You're not building anything with them. And you always want to be building something with your crush, even if you're texting them. Texting is the gateway to doing other things, which is hanging out in person or spending time together. So don't invest all your time in just texting. You always want to be advancing. And rule number five that people follow is sometimes they just pass it off to their friends. They have their friends do the talking because maybe they're too nervous or they don't know what to say or they don't want to get embarrassed. I think if you're in a situation like that where you're passing off uh, you connecting with your crush to someone else, you're running the risk of your friends doing something where they may get make you look embarrassed or they may say something stupid or you may have to correct their mistakes. And if your friends are the ones who are spending all the time talking to your crush, then when you choose to hang out with your crush in person, it's going to be so much harder for you. You're going to feel so much weirder because you haven't built up everything with them for real and you've done it through your friends. So those are the five rules I kind of quickly ran through there. If you haven't already hit the thumbs up on this video, um, thank you guys so much for bearing 
bearing with me through all the confusion. I know it kept saying like one person's watching, um, but clearly we had like 30 people right here in the live stream. Um, so Atlanta boy, yeah, I think YouTube's broken. I did something wrong. Hope, hope it saves the stream and doesn't mess anything up. But all in all, guys, um, those are the rules. Follow me over on Instagram. Thank you so much for being part of this live stream. I hope those rules were helpful. If you guys have other questions about things you've heard about texting, things that you should and shouldn't do, leave them in the comment section down underneath this video. I'm gonna answer every single one of those comments and give you my opinions and my answers. I have another, another video coming out tomorrow where I asked you guys over on Instagram, what are some of the biggest texting challenges you guys face? And I'm gonna answer them tomorrow in the video. So uh, it's gonna be fun. Um, so yeah, follow me on Instagram so that next time I do another one of those videos, you your answer can be featured. I'm, I'm still not sure whether or not I wanna feature people's names or not, but for now I'm not gonna do it until people give me the okay, cause you never know. Anyway, thank you guys so much for being part of this. Cue the bananas. Let's see how many bananas we can get in this live stream. Thank you guys again. Can I leave a question in the comment section? Quite, uh, Quentin says, absolutely leave a comment in the question section. Anthony cued it, launch the bananas guys, you heard him. <laughs> so many bananas. <laughs> I remember last week we had Thanos in here, right? Thanos was trying to fight the banana squad. Not going to happen here. We got our bananas here. We'll pull the bananas out of those banana holsters, guys. <laughs> Thank you guys again for being a part of this live stream. It's always a lot of fun talking to you guys. I love this. I love you guys. On that note, guys, I'll talk to you tomorrow. As always, love and peace. See you guys next time.